So let's go over how layers work in Affinity Designer. Layering is basically a way of organizing your work on your canvas. And if you notice over here, you have the layers menu to the right hand side of your screen. So let's create some objects to demonstrate how this works. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool over here and I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to give that some color. And then I'm going to create a circle on top of it like this. And then I'll give that some color. And then I'm going to create one more shape like this, maybe a rounded rectangle like this, and I will give that some color. Now, if you notice, let me grab the select tool. If you notice, every time I created an object, it applied that object to its own independent layer, as you see here. And the stacking order of these layers dictates the stacking order of these objects. So if I want to take this rounded rectangle right here and move this to the bottom of the order, I can just take this and click and drag this down here like that and you get the idea. You could click and drag these around and move them around however you'd like to position them as needed. Okay, so what we have over here, these check boxes, if I click on these, these layers right here, as I click on each of them, each object is selected. If you notice there's a check box next to each layer, if I uncheck that, it makes the visibility of the layer gone. So that's one way where you can make your objects temporarily invisible without getting rid of them. This can be useful if you're working on an elaborate drawing or design with lots of different moving parts and uh, you need sometimes for certain things to be invisible so you can draw other things. So let me put that back where it was. And uh, you could also lock your layer as well. If you select that, you can come up here to this lock icon and click on lock or unlock. It now locks that layer so that you can't edit it. You can continue working on in your canvas and editing these objects over here. But if you try to move this object, you can't. It's locked to your canvas. And that can be really useful, again, when you're working on really elaborate designs like this where you maybe want to create something and make sure you're not accidentally moving something else. Okay, so if at any point you want to get rid of that lock, if you notice right here we have the lock icon, you just go ahead and click on that, and now the layer is unlocked and you can move it again. And another thing with the layer menu over here, if you notice we have the opacity slider right here. If I select this object, if I have this layer selected and I open the opacity slider, I can bring down the opacity of the layer like that. So that's another way to change the opacity of an object. One way to do it is by bringing down the opacity in the color menu, but that only changes the opacity for the one single object that you have selected. If you want to create, if you want to change the opacity of multiple objects, you could put them together in a layer group and bring down the opacity of that entire group using the layers uh, opacity right here. So speaking of layer groups, let me show you how that works now. Layer grouping is a way of taking multiple objects and putting them in one layer so that they're grouped together and they act as a unit. Let me show you over here as an example. I have this design over here. This design is a series of layer groups. Okay, I have this object or this grouping of objects right here. This is the, uh, the banner, as you can see right here in the layer menu. And over here I have another layer group for the tools, which is uh, right here. And then I have another layer group right here for these little accent pieces, which is right there. Okay, now if I expand any of these layer groups, you can see all of the individual objects in that layer group like that. And then I can collapse the layer group like that to uh, put it back where it was. So let's go over how to create layer groups. Okay, so let's go over here. And um, let me take these two objects right here. I'm going to click and drag over both of these. With these both selected, I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to click on group. And there you go. It created a new layer group just like that. And you can expand that menu to edit it as needed. Okay, now if you want to ungroup it, you can just go to layer, ungroup, and it'll ungroup those layers. And by the way, you can change the name of any of these labels anytime you want by just double clicking the names right here. So if you notice over here, I gave these layer groups names. This is the uh, the tools group, this is the accents group, and this is the banner group. So if you want to group something together, like I'm going to group this together, go to layer group, and I'm going to change the name. I'm going to change that to um, circle and rectangle. There you go. Now we have a layer group like that. So layer groups are very, very useful. It's a great way to organize your work as you saw that I did over here. So let's go over some of the other things that uh, the layers menu can do. If you come down here and you look towards the bottom of the interface, uh, you have this button right here for making layer masks. That will have its own dedicated video coming up shortly. We have another option right here for adjustment layers. That will also have its own dedicated video. And then layer effects, which will also have its own dedicated video. Now over here, we have these options to add a new layer, add a pixel layer, or remove the layer. Okay, so let's say I want to get rid of a layer. If I want to get rid of this object right here, I can just select whatever layer I'd like, and I can just go ahead and click that trash can right there, 
and now the layer is gone. That effectively deletes the object as well. So let me go ahead and put that back by hitting Control Z. And if you want to add a new layer, you can add your own blank layer right here. You just go ahead and click on that, and now you have a new layer that you can work with. You can add objects into that layer if you'd like. And then finally over here we have Add Pixel Layer. This has to do with the um, pixel persona, which is located up here. We will be having an entire dedicated section to the pixel persona. Uh, but in short, if you want to add a pixel layer, just come over here to the pixel persona. And if you want to create pixel-based imagery like paintbrushes and stuff like that in imagery, just go ahead and add a new pixel layer. And now you can grab your paintbrush and go ahead and paint like that in that pixel layer. And at any point, you can just get rid of it by clicking the trash can like that. So those are the basics of working with uh, layers in Affinity Designer. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be going over some of the more advanced features of working with layers. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Affinity Designer and explain what it is and demonstrate how it works, just like I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that at the bottom of the post if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.